Hello friends, uh, uh, till now we have discussed about the phase transformation and uh, in the last lecture we also discussed about the nucleation, so when a phase transform from a parent phase to a new phase, uh, a product phase, there is always going to be, uh, the process is also going, always going to be a nucleation and growth, okay. So it is not like that. Uh, phase when it becomes unstable, okay, it will spontaneously go into a new phase, okay, like the whole thing changes without uh, any other process just from one phase to another. For example, from austenite to ferrite, it will not be a spontaneous, the whole system is not going to go into a new phase suddenly, but it will be a process like where you have to nucleate first the product phase okay and then it will grow so it takes time so there is a rate involved here okay a, a factor of time is involved here that it will take time though it is a though austenite is unstable let us say at 700 degree celsius okay but it is not going to be a spontaneous uh, uh, change into ferrite okay it will go through this process it is going to take time Okay, so that is what we understood from nucleation and growth rate and then we also saw a overall transformation rate from that. Now there are, there are very important technological application or technological uh, uh, importance of these ideas okay, and that is in heat treatment processes. So before going to heat treatment processes, we will under, try to understand two very important uh, ideas. Okay or two important concepts, okay, one is called TTT curves, okay, that is time, uh, time temperature transformation curve and another is CCT curve which is continuous cooling transformation curves, okay, and these are technologically very important, okay, to know that what will be the time it is going to take for transformation first, what kind of treatment I will be giving to get a particular type of microstructure, okay. So, it gives you uh, overall idea and it actually helps in the, uh, in the design of the process, okay, if we have these curves with us, okay. So, before going uh, to TTT CCT curves, just uh, a recap and maybe some uh, uh, phases which we might not have discussed till now, okay. So, some microstructure which we will found uh, find uh, or phases which we will find in steel okay, that we will see. So, one of them and you can see that I have written diffusional here. So, that means it is through diffusional transformation, okay. diffusion already we know uh, the concept. Okay. So, this phase change will take place because of the diffusion of atoms. Okay. So, one of them is already we have seen perlite. Okay, which is a lamellar microstructure containing alternate layers of ferrite and cementite and which forms due to eutectoid reaction in iron carbon alloys okay, from austenite to uh, a region where you get ferrite and cementite okay, and uh, they form uh, next to each other and we have also discussed that why they form next to each other okay, uh, because that is how they will be able to transport uh, atoms between the two phases. Okay, depending upon their composition and that will be the easiest way to do that. So, first one is perlite, couple of new phases uh, or microstructure which you will see one of them again diffusional, uh, of course there are some debate about whether it is diffusional or not, but let us say it is diffusional. There you will see uh, first phase which is called upper bainite okay. and it for how it transforms the formation after isothermal holding at temperatures at around 300 to 540 degree Celsius below the nose in TTT curve. So, we will see what do we mean by these TTT curves. It consists of needles of ferrite separated by long cementite particles. So, this is uh, uh, the type of microstructure you will see if you are getting bainite. Of course, it is not very easy to see bainite in optical microscope. But uh, one micrograph is shown here, it is taken from a book by Callister. Okay. So, you can see the ferrite, uh, these are the ferrite plates, okay. 
long ferrite plates and in between these two ferrite plates is cementite as shown by an arrow here. Okay, so, you get ferrite plates and in between them the cementite is formed. So, in perlite what we saw, we saw ferrite, perlite, ferrite, perlite uh, uh, morphology like that. In this case it is big ferrite plates are there and between two ferrite plates uh, a thin uh, cementite layer will be there. Okay. So, this is how the microstructure will look like. If you go to another phase which is called lower bainite, so in this formation after isothermal holding at temperature of 200 to 300 degree Celsius. So, for upper bainite it is around 300 to 540 degree Celsius, for lower bainite it is around 200 to 300 degree Celsius. Consists of thin plates of ferrite again with very fine rods or blades of cementite within ferrite plates. Okay. So, in this case now again ferrite will be like plates, okay, thin plates, but the cementite will not be between the two plates, cementite will be within the ferrite uh, um, plate itself as is shown in a schematic here. So, this will be a ferrite plate and then you have cementite which is within the ferrite plate. Okay. So, I think because of uh, tr uh, lower tra transformation temperature you do not get enough time for diffusion okay, and that is why they nucleate within the uh, ferrite plate. Okay. So, this is how the microstructure will look like for upper bainite and lower bainite. Uh, of course, very difficult to resolve them in an optical microscope. Okay. Then one of the very important phase which you get in steel is called martensite. Okay. It is a diffusion less transformation. Okay. In this case, there is no uh, confusion uh, that it is diffusional or diffusion less, it is going to be diffusion less. Okay. So, when it forms, martensite forms when austenite is rapidly cooled quenched to room temperature. So, if you do very fast cooling the austenite transforms to martensite. It forms nearly instantaneously when the required low temperature is reached. Okay. So, this is how a TTT diagram will look like, we will go again into detail of that. I just wanted to show you that what martensite will be doing. So, you have to have a very high cooling rate as I am showing it here. Okay. This is the kind of cooling rate we will have. Okay, and you can see that in this case there is no effect of time. For example, if I hold my material after crossing the M start, so martensite will start forming when I cross a temperature of let us say here it is around 220 degree Celsius. Okay, so, as soon as I cross that it will start forming and suppose if I hold, so suppose I hold at some 200 degree Celsius for any amount of time, the amount of martensite which has formed will remain same. Okay. For example, if I go to a temperature of around let us say here it is 170 degree Celsius or so, okay, at which point I will have 50 percent martensite and if I hold at this temperature it is going to be 50 percent martensite without any effect of time. So, the martensite transformation how much martensite will be forming will depend only on that at what temperature I am up to what temperature I am going. Okay. So, there is no effect of uh, time here. So, it does not require any diffusion, so no thermal activation is needed, this is called an athermal transformation okay, because there is no effect of time only you have temperature at what temperature you are the, that decides the how much uh, martensite will form. In a, when it forms, each atom displaces a small subatomic distance to transform FCC gamma to martensite, which has a body centered tetragonal structure or BCC, it can be both. Okay. So, if carbon is trapped while transforming, then you will get BCT, if it is not there, then you will get BCC. Okay. But martensite transformation involves only very small changes in the atomic positions, okay. that is why because when we are doing at a very fast cooling rate, okay, you do not have time for very large range diffusion. So, only small changes in the atom, atomic, loca atomic location will give you martensite. 
Of course, we are not going into details of atomic uh, mechanism here. Martensite is metastable, okay. it is not a stable phase and can persist indefinitely at room temperature, but will transform to equilibrium phase on annealing at an elevated temperature. So, it is like diamond, uh, in case of diamond we said that though it is not a stable phase of carbon, but it will uh, remain in form of diamond. Similarly, martensite is not a stable uh, phase, okay, but it will remain like that, okay. And but it will, uh, if I take it to high temperature, it will, the martensite will dissociate into the stable phases. Since martensite is metastable, non-equilibrium phase, it does not appear in phase uh, or phase diagram. Okay, in the phase diagram of iron carbon phase diagram, we did not talk about martensite. We talked about austenite, we talked about delta ferrite, we talked about uh, alpha ferrite, we talked about cementite, but we did not talk about martensite there okay, because phase diagrams are equilibrium phase diagrams and this is a non-equilibrium phase, it is not a stable phase. Okay. That is why it is not going to appear on the phase diagram. So, this you should always remember. Okay, sometime non-equilibrium phase uh, phases are shown on the phase diagram by a dashed line. Okay, so basically th there are other phases also, but these are the two, three or four most important ones. Okay, uh, austenite and ferrite we have already seen in quite detail. Okay, then you will get perlite or you will get upper bainite, lower bainite, and martensite. Okay. So, now coming to time temperature tra transformation diagrams. Okay. So, basically uh, we have already seen that you get uh, for transformation, uh, we get a typical S curve, the growth uh, uh, kinetics when we were looking at it, we said it, it has a typical S curve. So, first it is slow, then it accelerates, okay, go to maximum and then it again decelerates. So, from these S curves only you uh, get this TTT curves. Okay. So, family of S, shove, S shaped curves at different temperature are used to construct a TTT diagram. We will see one example here. And how you get that? By doing a isothermal constant temperature transformation. So, from austenite phase you come to some temperature where austenite is not stable, hold at that temperature for very long time and you will have a transformation uh, during this process. Okay. At low temperatures, the transformation occurs sooner. It is controlled by rate of nucleation and grain growth, sorry it should not be grain growth, uh, that is only grow, growth of a new phase okay. that is controlled by diffusion is reduced. I will just cross this here. So, at low temperature the transformation occurs sooner, it is controlled by rate of nucleation. So, when you go to very low temperatures, okay, as we discussed uh, uh, during nucleation and growth that your driving force increases. So, the uh, overall transformation rate increases. Okay. So, that is the reason why you have higher transformation rate as we go uh, uh, or we give a large undercooling or large supercooling. Okay. So, if you are at a temperature below the equilibrium temperature where this particular phase is not stable, okay, the growth rate, will, uh, the nucleation rate will be high. So, you will get very, the microstructure which you are going to get will be very fine. Okay. And the growth will be of course, controlled by diffusion. So, growth also initially will increase and then it will decrease. Okay. At composition other than eutectoid or pro eutectoid phase, ferrite or cementite coexist with perlite. Additional curve for pro eutectoid transformation must be included on TTT diagrams. Okay. So, if you have any other phase also coming with perlite for example, in this case, then we have to have additional TTT curve for uh, uh, this another phase also. Okay. Now, uh, coming to how the uh, uh, transformation uh, TTT curves are plotted, okay. you can see that this is my T equilibrium temperature. So, basically above this austenite is stable. Okay. Let me write it here that above this my austenite is stable. Okay. 
So, let us say we are uh, talking about uh, eutectoid steel here. Okay, so, uh, let us say around say this dish must then uh, be equal to 723 degree Celsius or so. Okay. So, above this it will be stable, austenite stable and below that you will have uh, formation of perlite. Okay. Now, so let us say I am at this temperature right now okay, and I have started cooling. Okay. So, I am just doing a kind of a rapid cooling here. Okay, quickly I am going to any temperature I like. For example, I come to this temperature here okay, and then I am holding at this temperature. So, you can see that uh, this is isotherm okay, and this is my time scale, this is my temperature scale, I am not changing the temperature. So, from this temperature to this temperature I have come quickly and now at the, any temperature below this 723 austenite is not stable. So, I say uh, austenite unstable okay. and I am holding it. If you look at the S, uh, the S curve which we discussed okay, uh, at after some uh, waiting period okay, in which you will have uh, uh, the nucleation and so on, okay, your growth starts and accelerates and decelerates. So, from 0 fraction you go to the 100 percent fraction of new phase which is forming. Okay. So, you can see at the start the where the start is taking place for the transformation that is you can say that okay, uh, let us say I am doing this experiment at 700 degree Celsius. Okay. So, this S curve is plotted for 700 degree Celsius. Okay. So, I have found out that after this much time the transformation starts. So, I have plotted one point here and after this much duration the transformation is complete. So, I have plotted another point here. Okay. So, now I have got two points on the TTD diagram. Okay. Right now there is no TTD diagram only I have these two points. Let us say now again I will do uh, another experiment. Okay. Let us say I do it now at 650 degree Celsius okay. and again maybe I will get another type of S curve here. For example, uh, let us say, so let us say I will get uh, another curve like something like this okay. and I can again draw that where it starts, where it ends. Okay. So, this is my start point, this is my end point. Okay. So, now at 600 degree Celsius I have got another two points. Okay. So, now like that I can keep getting points that where the phase transformation has started, where it is completed. And that is how you can get if you get all the points here, you will see that you are getting a curve here. And this is a isothermal uh, transformation curve, TTT curve. Okay. So, you can see that uh, uh, now I will be able to tell you that if you want coarse perlite at what temperature you should hold the your material after cooling. If you want fine perlite at what temperature you should hold it. Okay. You can see that if I do large undercooling there will be more nucleation event. So, the microstructure will be fine. Then you will see at some point it becomes maximum, the transformation rate will be maximum and then it becomes again sl sluggish. Okay. Again it becomes slower and this is what we call as nose of TT curve. So, okay. so this is my nose of the TTT curve and again it will start decreasing. So, I get another two type of microstructure here one is upper bainite and second one is lower bainite. So, if I do uh, cooling such that I, I am not uh, crossing the, the nose okay, then I will be even if I hold at temperature where lower bainite will be forming uh, I will get lower bainite. Okay. So, this curve what they tell me is that where the transformation is going to start and where the transformation is going to complete. Okay. If I stop the uh, if I so let us say if I do something like this I start I, I am holding my material at 700 degree Celsius okay, up to this time I am not going up to the finish. Okay. So, then I, I will get only 50 percent of perlite here. Okay. And suppose remaining material I just quench it 
okay, then I will get the martensite here. Okay, so, you see for martensite there is no time scale here, it is a constant uh, the two lines are at constant temperature. So, if I somehow uh, escape this nose and go below any temperature below the MS, I will start forming the martensite. Okay, and if I cross this temperature, I will finish the martensitic transformation. So, in this case there is no effect of time. So, suppose I at 700 degree Celsius, I do hold up to a time where 50 percent perlite has formed okay, and then I quench it. So, the remaining austenite will be transforming to martensite. Okay. So, by having uh, or by manipulating this type of uh, treatments, you can see that you can get plethora of uh, microstructures. Okay. So, this is how the time temperature transformation curves are made okay, that is explained in the next slide also. So, for TT diagram of any material uh, are determined by performing a series of experiments taking example of eutectoid steel following steps will be followed from austenite phase temperature above 725 degree Celsius cool it to desired temperature let us say 700 degree Celsius. Hold the specimen at that temperature. So, you have doing you are doing isothermal transformation. Note down the time at the start of transformation and end of it. You can use dilatometer to determine start and end of transformation. Okay. Phase change produces volume change. Dilatometer is a is a is a instrument to give you the change in the volume okay, or change in the dimension of the uh, sample. Okay. So, when the phase change occur, okay, you are going from FCC to BCC or from BCC to HCP or whatever, there is always a going to be associated change in the size of the sample, okay, dimension of the sample, volume of the sample. And this can be noted by uh, instrument called dilatometer. So, this dilation in the shape in the size will be noted by a instrument okay and that is how you can get that where the transformation is starting and where the transformation is completed okay so this is how you plot a time temperature transformation diagram now you will be able to appreciate that when we discussed overall transformation rate okay i said you can uh, get a ttt curve from that Okay, you now you will be able to notice the similarities between the overall transformation curve and the TTT curve here. Okay. So, here in overall transformation rate what we plotted on y axis you had temperature on x axis I had rate transformation rate. So, I said the transformation rate will be slow or will be sluggish uh, at a small undercooling, it will increase with the undercooling okay, and then it will again go become uh, slow. If you see the overall transformation rate also it follows a similar train, but uh, only difference is that instead of rate here I am plotting time here okay, and you know rate and time have inverse relationship. Okay, so, as if you are saying that rate is highest here then on time scale I will say the time required to start the transformation will be lowest here. Okay. So, as you can see you rate is high, so the transformation time will be low. Okay. So, this is how your transformation rate those nucleation growth ideas are related to your TTT diagram and from TTT diagram you can uh, actually uh, appreciate that it is very important to understand to for getting a particular microstructure. Suppose uh, a customer asks that I need a fine perlite, I know at what temperature I should hold to get fine perlite. If somebody asks me coarse perlite, of course I will know at what temperature I have to hold to get coarse perlite. Okay. And of course, for different steel these curves will be different okay, because your composition changes, so all your uh, kinetics will change. Okay. So, for a different steel you will have different type of curve. Okay. Uh, before coming to this I also said uh, initially here in the first slide that if you have a composition other than eutectoid or pro eutectoid phase ferrite cementite also will, ha will have to come. Okay. So, just uh, let me give you some idea about that. 
so basically so i have temperature here okay and i have time here okay one temperature we have already discussed okay so this is my let's say now i will call it as temperature this where eutectic reaction will be taking place okay so one curve i have already shown you that you will get something like this okay now if you have this is for 0.76 or percent carbon or 0.8 percent so in some some books you will see 0.8% in some books you will see 0.76% it is more or less around that composition where you get the eutectic reaction okay so now as i so told you that for a uh, if 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 it is a hypoeutectoid steel for example so my carbon percentage is lower than 0.76% carbon okay so it is hypoeutectoid okay if it is hypoeutectoid then uh, i should get one phase forming before the eutectic eutectoid reaction okay and that will be pro eutectoid ferrite isn't it so that will be forming before this paralytic reaction okay so let's say for a particular uh, composition that temperature is this okay and uh, i think this is your a3 temperature on the phase diagram okay so from where the ut pro eutectoid ferrite should start forming so i will get an additional curve now okay which will be related to pro eutectoid ferrite okay so now once i go from a stable austenite phase so this is a stable austenite here Uh, i will write just gamma here okay suppose i start the isothermal uh, i do a rapid cooling okay and then i am holding uh, isothermally at this particular temperature now okay so now you can see that i will get some amount of pro eutectoid ferrite okay so this is for this base for pro eutectoid ferrite okay and some amount of perlite okay which you can easily appreciate from the phase diagram according to the phase diagram it was supposed to be like this okay so suppose i take any composition here so as soon as i cross this temperature the pro eutectoid ferrite will form okay and when i cross this temperature the remaining austenite will be uh, transforming into eutectoid and how much perlite will be forming i can get from the lever rule so this much will be the uh, amount of perlite divided by the total uh, arm length and this much uh, arm length divided by the total will be the uh, pro eutectoid ferrite okay so i can get that how much will be the pro eutectoid ferrite how much will be the perlite okay during the after the transformation if i do at any other temperature you will see that this much will be the uh, this much will be the time required to have pro eutectoid transformation and this much will be the time required to have perlitic transformation okay if if it is a hyper eutectoid steel then instead of pro eutectoid ferrite you will get pro eutectoid cementite isn't it so if you have a, a, a composition where another phase is also coming there will be an additional curve here for the that particular phase so it can be either pro eutectoid ferrite or pro eutectoid cementite you will get additional one and then you will have A transformation like this if you are not crossing the equilibrium temp uh, this uh, um, uh, eutectoid temperature it will be you will get ferrite obviously okay so we discussed this one we also saw the procedure to get a ttt diagram okay we uh, 
kind of uh, showed the similarity between the transfer overall transformation rate and transformation uh, TTT diagrams. Now, TTT diagram can be manipulated by addition of alloying elements. For example, the addition of Mn here divided TTT diagram into two bays. Okay, instead of one single curve like this, in the, right now I am also seeing two curves here. Okay, one is like this, another one is like this. You will be able to appreciate the importance of this while when we will discuss the CCT diagrams. Okay, you will see that why this is very important. Okay, and just before telling you that why this is important, I will tell you one. Uh, let, okay, we'll go to CCT curve first. So, this is a continuous cooling transformation diagram. Why this is important? Why TTT curves are not uh, going to be of much help to you? Because in industry, you would not be able to do uh, isothermal uh, transformation. Okay. For a small sample, taking it from austenite temperature okay, quickly to a temperature where you are going to do uh, isothermal transformation. Okay, is easy. Okay, for it is a very small sample. Suppose you have a component, a big component like this one. Okay, so let's say it, uh, you are able to achieve a uniform temperature throughout the uh, section of this uh, this big product. Now, how we are going to do a isothermal transformation of this? Okay, or how I am going to first quench this to a temperature? Okay, where I want to hold it uh, for a isothermal transformation. For this much big body, okay, uh, uh, you must be knowing about heat transfer. Okay, the first heat transfer will take place from the surface, so you will have lower temperature of the, at the surface, but inside temperature will be still high. This heat will be conducted and it will be uh, either radiated or you can take out from convection. Okay, so it is not an easy job to cool this product to a temperature where I want to hold it isothermally. And then holding isothermally at that temperature require energy and time. Okay. So, industrially TTT uh, curves are not going to help you and we are not going to do isothermal transformation most of the time. So, in industry it is what we do is continuous cooling transformation. So, you will be continuously cooling the steel from the austenite temperature to uh, room temperature okay, without doing any holding of at a particular temperature. So, these are called continuous cooling transformation diagram. So, whatever we have plotted for trans TTT diagram that will slightly change okay, and what the change will be is shown here. Okay, you can see that this is a the blue lines or the dark blue lines are shown for TTT curves. Okay. And this dashed one is also shown here where the transformation will complete. And the CCT curve are shifted towards the right okay, and also shifted downwards. So, from when you transform from TTT to CCT, the curves will shift right and downwards. Okay. This is because your uh, kinetics are changing because of continuous cooling. Okay. So, the CCT curve is shown by this red line here. So, this is where the transformation will start and this is where the transformation will end. And you can see that we are not plotting anything below the nose as in TTT curve we said that okay, you can go uh, at a temperature below the nose temperature and again you will have Benedict transformation here. But in CCT we, curve we are not showing anything below the nose. Why? If you see the TTT curves, okay, their, their transformation is the cooling is curve is going like this which is superimposed on the TTT and CCT curve here. There are two cooling curves are shown here. So, for any cooling whatever you do, you are always going to cross the whether it is perlite or ferrite or whatever phases are coming, you will always going to cross the one which are going to form at higher temperature first and then you will be going below uh, the, the temperature will go below uh, below the nose. Okay. So, the transformation will always start for perlite or ferrite before it does for benite okay. because I am always going to cross this boundary first 
okay whereas in ttd actually what we do, did is we first skipped the any transformation high temperature transformation and came to this temperature and then we hold we de, did the isothermal holding at this temperature okay whereas in this case now okay you can see that i cannot do that it is always going to cross the boundary here the it, it will start the either ferrite or perlite transformation okay and it will end somewhere here where it crosses the end uh, 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 the transformation end curve so i cannot form bainite here okay so in continuous cooling transformation you won't be able to form bainite okay and that is where now uh, you will start appreciating that why you we wanted to those two bays okay so in in ccd curves i am not going to have anything below the nose because uh, i won't be able to uh, uh, form anything okay if i skip the nose also if i do a fast cooling i will go into the martensite region i cannot be able to go to bainite region okay so this is what is continuous cooling transformation curves so ccd curve does not extend beyond the nose of ttd curve as i told you one cannot obtain bainite microstructure by continuous cooling we will get plethora of microstructure due to continuous cooling now you can also appreciate that in isothermal transformation i am sure that i am going to get coarse perlite fine perlite or upper bainite or lower bainite because i am holding at that temperature where these phases are going to form or these micro microstructures are going to form in continuous transformation you will get actually maybe a coarse perlite also maybe a fine perlite also because different uh, section of your product will be uh, have will be having different cooling rates or surface will be having very high cooling rate the interior of the product will be having low cooling rate so you will get plethora of microstructure within the sample to get martin side we have to avoid the nose in the cct diagram as we have already told okay and now you as i told you you will be able to appreciate that why we need these two bays here so this is a 2% manganese steel okay where you have one bay for perlite another bay for bainite and now you can see that with the continuous cooling curve also i am able to have bainitic transformation or bainite i will i am able to get bainite in, with continuous cooling also okay so with this i would like to thank you okay and uh, basically we have covered very important technological uh, aspect of this material science and engineering that how we are going to have different type of transformations okay and what uh, different phases you will get at different temperature okay and uh, alloying element uh, we just saw one alloying element there are large number of alloying element which are used in steels uh, they are going to affect your transformation rate and transformation start time and end time okay and that is how you are going to get different type of microstructure and of course each microstructure has their own properties okay so with that i say thank you to you